parents are beautiful home in a faraway land where the saints of God are gathering. Hear the sweet melodies they are singing unto the Lord. Oh, they are giving him praises forevermore. I like him, Arama, a betty, I am a bending sobby, all the wood, no robot, and a book. Hello everybody, once again this is Fred Wanko coming to you from our studios in Chicago with another edition of Bull Talk on Island TV and as usual I like to say good morning, good afternoon and good evening to you depending on where you are around the world. There's been a lot of talk in the news in Nigeria about insecurity and a lot of killings in and the reason this topic is important to me today is that Nigerians keep complaining about the insecurity and the killings, but Nigerians refuse to tell ourselves the truth. Until Nigerians decide to really leave our tribal sentiments aside and bring out the history of who Nigeria really is and what has happened in Nigeria since 1966 and tell the truth about it. We're wasting our time and I don't see why everybody in Nigeria shouldn't be talking about people going their separate ways. The only ones who are not going to talk about it is the Fulani Cabal and how the rest of Nigeria could sit back and let Less than 6 million Nigerians hold a country of 200 million people hostage remains a mystery to me. Let's go down memory lane. In 1966, which is when this whole thing started, and attempts have never been made to correct it. In 1966, Igbos were massacred in the north. The bigots in Nigeria will turn off right now because they don't want to hear the truth. What made any of them think that after the Igbos were done with, that the Fulani Kaba was going to be done? What made anybody in the southwest not really think that a kitty was going to happen sooner or later? And it's only the beginning if Nigerians don't wake up. A lot of Nigerians, in the South especially, but even in the Middle Belt, were sympathetic to the Igbo cause, but they stayed mum and said nothing while their brothers were pogromed in the North. Igbos were massacred in the North to the possible tune of 100,000 Igbos before the civil war started and Nigerians never stood up to challenge it. Then the civil war came, Nigeria hurriedly carved out the peripheral neighbors of Igbos that got along very well with Igbos, poisoned their minds against Igbos, created states. They created Cross River State and River State which later became Apwaibom and Cross River State and River State and Bielsa. Midwest already existed and they called it the Bendel State. Inside Bet Bendel State was a core Igbo group in Asaba, some in Ibuzo and other areas around there, but the Asabas especially are staunchly Igbo people. The only thing Nigerians find today about Muritala Muhammad 
was that he was a hero of the Nigerian army. But nobody remembers because Nigeria hides its, its history. Nobody remembers that Moritala Mohammed went into Asaba, gathered the men in Asaba, Igbo men who were Nigerians. They didn't fight with Biafra. They fought with Nigeria against Biafra. Gathered them and massacred them in front of their wives. Until this day, Nigeria has not apologized to Nigerians in Asaba, not to Biafrans. He massacred them. Where is the loyalty? I'm going to leave it at this and play you a few supporting videos, very short videos. Try to keep this recording under third, uh, 15 minutes and then I'll come back and conclude on the other side. Earlier, during the riot of May 1966, thousands of Easterners, mostly Igbos, were killed in many northern cities, especially in Kaduna, Kanu and Jaws. The coming of Gawan to power did not stop the systematic killings. Such was the horror that attended Gawan's early days in office. By the end of 1966, thousands of refugees who were pouring into the East returned with tales of horror. For years now, the senseless violence perpetrated by hitmen in parts of the country has left a trail of devastation as lives have been lost, families torn apart, and communities shattered. President Mohamed Buhari has condemned the extreme violence and killings of scores of people in Benue states within 48 hours. There was no restraint on the outpour of emotions at the funeral ceremony of at least 33 people killed during a bandit attack on Rumji community in Zangon Katap, local government area of Kaduna State. The bandits invaded the community on Saturday night and opened fire on the villagers who had mostly gone to bed. Hi, I'm Anne Mwawadu. Here's a Channel TV evening news recap for September the 29th, 2021. Meanwhile, gunmen have killed Dr. Chike Akunyili, the husband of the late former Director General of the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAC, Dora Akunyili. Dr. Akunyili was killed on Tuesday alongside his driver and a police escort around the Port Junction in the Demili North Anambra State. Top United Nations human rights official has voiced deep alarm over the series of attacks on communities in central Nigeria, which have left at least 160 people dead and many more injured. President Bola Tinubu has ordered a probe into attacks that occurred in the Plateau State. We begin the news headlines in Ekiti State, where some students and their teachers have been abducted. Six school children, three teachers and a bus driver were kidnapped in Emure, Ekiti. The kidnap of the students is coming on the heels of the killing of two traditional rulers in Ekiti State. It's all gloom as residents of Eshu Ekiti and Imojo Ekiti are mourning the death of their monarchs. Folks, there's a method to my madness. Today's story is about the killings in Ekiti. And I must say that my heart goes out to the families that lost loved ones in Ekiti. And my heart goes out to the families of those students, their teachers, and the driver that are still being held by kidnappers. If you notice, I started my story from 1966 and the massacre of Igbos in the north. Now, I've played you the videos of 
news clips from the atrocities going on in Benue State that went on and still going on in Benue State, Plateau State, Kadu Kaduna State, especially Southern Kaduna, um, the Southeast that has been under siege for the last five, six years, and now Ekiti. Not to mention other parts of the country all over Nigeria, these killings are going on. The reason I bring it up is that the Akiti thing has been in the news significantly. But we can't forget that this happened to Igbos. Nobody said anything but Igbos. It happened to people in Benue. Nigerians said a little and went back to their work. It happened in Plateau. It's ongoing in southern Kaduna ongoing all over the country. But while we're talking about Ekiti, why, are, why is our memory so short? It was less than two and a half, three years ago that the daughter of an Afeni Fere chieftain, her car was shot into on the highway by Fulani herdsmen, and the poor lady died. The man who is your president today was eyeing the presidency and didn't want to ruffle feathers with the Fulani people who stole him into office. And he wouldn't even speak up for his own tribes lady, who was killed by Fulani herdsmen. He even came out and said, how do you know that it's the Fulani herdsmen that killed her? Why do I say this? The bigots in Lagos especially, but all across the Southwest, not Yorubas, the bigots. I'm not talking about Yorubas in a blanket way. There are progressive Yorubas, but the bigots in Yoruba land stood with this man, not because they believe in him, but because he's a Yoruba man. And we'll rather have him there than a qualified non-Yoruba person regardless of what tribe that person comes from. When are Nigerians going to stop buying freaking <clears throat> lip service? When the massacre took, took place in Benue State, one of the times it did, during the Buhari government, he commiserated with them from Asherok, not by going there, saying he was going to mobilize forces to make sure people are brought to book. Nothing happened. While your current president is signing personal contracts in France, he has commiserated with the families in Ekiti, where the monarchs were killed and the kids are kidnapped, and he has promised he'll mobilize forces. And Nigerians are going to believe that. May the souls of the two monarchs rest in peace. But I'm sad to say, and I don't say it as I told you so, but those two monarchs were APC members and they supported Bola Ahmed Tinubu. And their people, their communities were called into a room, at least one of them, because there is a video of a lady saying that in Yoruba language, in a video, saying that he called them into rooms where they were thumbprinting for Bola Ahmed Tinubu in that election that he stole. The bad decisions we make today will come back to haunt generations on board. I hope Nigerians will wake up to our real responsibilities of telling the truth to power and not sitting back and saying, because it's my tribe, it's okay. Bola Ahmed Tinubu is bad news for Nigeria. Bola Ahmed Tinubu's only interest in Nigeria is to serve the Fulani cabal and to enrich his family. Once again, at this stage, let me remind you to please share, subscribe, like, and make a comment. Once again, this is Fred Monko coming to you from our studios in Chicago with another edition of Bull Talk on LN TV. And until next time, good night and God bless.